Colorado and I am doing what many of my subscribers have told me to do and that is to not film myself while I'm driving so let me adhere to good safety measures and we're on the road here and this video is called the law that sustains you because a lot of people are wondering what it's going to take to get this financial picture in order now here's what I want to tell you first I'm not your guru I am not a guru I'm not somebody <laughs> I'm not somebody that is above struggling okay because we all have challenges in life and I'm not here to tell you that I've got it all figured out because that's complete bullshit nobody has it all figured out but what I have discovered is what I do want to impart because there are certain things that I found to work time and time again and things that I can rely upon and sort of stand on solid ground and that's what's really important is to come out so you're not empty-handed when somebody tells you to try something and you don't want to come out empty-handed so here's what I've discovered when it comes to finances and money etc is that you are the source of the sorcery your external world is a reflection of your attitude towards life and how you approach everybody in your world is being subjectively reflected back to you like a mirror so since you're the source of the sorcery then all you have to do to get in alignment with the abundance of all that is is to become like in the likeness of the abundance of all that is to align with the force that sustains every man woman and child on this planet that keeps everyone's heart beating that keeps all of the circulatory systems going around it arranges the planets it aligns the stars there's a power and a force that's already existing that will sustain you and all you have to do is align with it and how you do it is you become like its nature its nature is that of a giver okay and so if you're down to your last dollar and you're broke then give that dollar with love to somebody who needs it even more than you do because what happens is what you put out comes back what you sow is what you reap and it's always multiplied so if you are running low on something then begin to find somebody in trouble because somebody in trouble is your doorway out of trouble if you need love then begin to sow love into the world begin to love everyone in a way that you want to be loved and don't expect that person to love you back see how it really works is that you begin giving in alignment with what you wish to receive but you're going to receive from the Creator from God from the divine whatever you call it not from that person see if you put something on another person you give somebody something and they feel an expectation that you have put upon them they will resent you so it's good to give with no strings attached but yet there are strings attached because we always do things in expectation of receiving you see it's very important that you do expect to receive because this has to do with your self-esteem being in alignment with receiving the lifestyle that you feel is deserving and worthy of what you dream of having see your ego is what keeps you out of the gutter your ego keeps you from being a complete martyr that ends up penniless broke and homeless because you feel you're not worthy to receive that is a perversion of reality okay to be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good is an awful consideration what you want to do is you want to recognize and align with the very fact the idea that you are a manifestation of the God force therefore you are already as omnipotent omnipresent and omniscient and abundant as you're ever going to be you're never going to be any more abundant than you already are but I want you to stay tuned for a quick presentation I'm going to give you with a slideshow and I'm going to explain to you how the principle has been foretold for centuries throughout history in the Bible and if you take the message and you really run with it you're going to break free and you're gonna bust loose right now you're gonna be able to change your attitude towards life your behavior that is at the root cause 
and it will allow you. You see, it's all about allowing. But since you are the source of the sorcery, there's something you must do. And that's something you must do is you must begin to be a seed sowing factory because that's what you are. You were born with talents. You must begin to pour your talents out into the world. So stay with me and let's take a look at the parable of the talents. Okay, it's Matthew David Hurtado and I'm back on the other side like I promised you I would be. And so you see the screen here, it says, if you are broke. Now this is for the broke people, this is not for everybody. If you are, then this is your next miracle breakthrough. And it begins by saying yes to what is your current reality because it is what you asked for. It's showing up in the form that you need to receive it at this time. Maybe you're sitting there and thinking, this guy has no idea what my situation is. My bills are piling up, my relationships are pissing me off, and I'm not into this feel good and it will all be delivered on a silver platter new age teaching. I still have struggles. In fact, if he tells me it's all my fault one more time and reminds me of how to visualize my dream life, claiming I can be there now, I'm checking out immediately. After all, if you're like most people, you're tired. You've been struggling for a long time. Somewhere, you got stuck. So if this is you, I'm going to get you unstuck today. If you keep looking at the results and the appearances are reminding you that things aren't happening fast enough and there are some days it hurts so bad that you want to give up and throw the towel in like the distance between having it all and being broke seems like the Grand Canyon it's quite simple actually so do you watch all the videos read all the books do the processes and still remain frustrated well then in truth it is your ego that is keeping you stuck in a status quo of being broke by playing its Jedi mind tricks on you so haven't you noticed how things always seem to end up circling back to the same starting point. This is what the ego's job is. It's to keep you in a reality, in a box, to keep you stuck. So if progress is so slow and dumbfounded that you would call it Congress, and a bailout would be nice, but nobody is coming to bail you out, pay attention. Because you are the source of the sorcery. The cause of the trouble is in your behavior or attitude towards life. When something shitty happens, do your defenses go off like an angry general who wants to nuke the offending situation and everyone involved? I used to be this way all the time. This repeats the lesson over and over. The whole universe is a simple program. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So what that means is give your money to people who need it. Give your love to people who need it. Give your peace to the perpetrators of anger. You have to give yourself to the world around you because you are the source and the sorcerer. As life flows through you into the world, it spreads itself into your picture of what you call reality. It's just a holographic projection. That's why it says in the Bible to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Your heart, in this case, is the attitude you have towards life. To break the spell that there is a stuck place or a block, begin by pouring out of yourself all of the talents inside of you. Remember the parable of the talents in the Bible? If not, don't worry. I'll show you in a moment. God is only pleased with the individual who produces interest on the talents given to him or her. I'll explain it shortly. So herein lies the biggest mystery money secret out there. To become interested in life and accrue interest to begin pouring out your talents to everyone in the world. Here are some facts. You were created to solve problems. Everything under the sun was created to solve a problem. Money is found everywhere where problems are being solved. Your talents inside of you were given to you to solve problems in other people's lives around you. When you solve their problems, God begins solving your problems, regardless of whether they treat you fairly or not. Now here is a shift that I would recommend making. Since you are the source and the sorcerer, if you see everything as perfect, as in the mantra, only the good is true, you will have an accurate perception of your reality. Declare at once that you are the only power in your universe and be the source of the sorcery. What flows out of you gets stuck to you and saturated in your world around you. If you have love inside, then sow it. If you are running out of money and you're down to your last couple bucks, give it away to somebody who needs it more than you. Sow it. 
So honor if you want to receive favor and blessings from above. Remember, money flows down, honor flows up. Sow it. You are a walking talent show. And this is the meaning of the parable of the talents. It's completely up to you, prosperity that is. What you sow will become your harvest. Your world is exactly how it should be, reflecting your attitude or heart back to you. It is your mirror. If you don't like what you see in the mirror, change the way you're looking at the reflection. Instead, declare the perfection and take your power back. Watch the illusion morph into something different. It has no choice. It's your reflection of your attitude towards life. The more you give of your talents, the more capacity to store more within your being accrue. As you become interested in the sowing of your talents, you will experience interest on your investment. Isn't it ironic how banks around the world have stopped giving interest? Now I'm going to leave that for another lesson. Your downfall began when you lost interest in sowing your talents into the world. You decided to conform. You lost your power. Now take it back. The world told you that you are in a me versus them situation, that you must engage in competition, divide and conquer. You must be in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You were conned in a matrix into believing an absolute lie that is designed to control you and to usurp your power away from you. So wake up at once. Wake up. This is simple. The law that sustains you is the law of the seed that you sow. What you sow is what you reap. As you look for ways to become interested in your world, invested in accruing interest on your talents, you begin to please God or the divine, call it what you will. But there is a force, and it does have this quality. God's nature is that of a giver. When your focus is aligned with the universal force, you are in alignment once again. Now, it says in the Bible, you have not because you ask amiss. You see, ask and it is given is only a half-truth. You must ask in the right way. What you gain is not for you. That is the whole thing that got crossed up. Whatever you gain is for others. If you want blessings to flow to you, remember how God responded to the talents in the parable of the talents and adjust your attitude towards life accordingly and watch the magic happen and you will break the spine of the lack and the poverty and the brokenness in your reality. Now this comes from Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30 and it's the parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. Now pause right there. Do you see how this person who had the five talents, let's say you have five talents inside of you. You have love, you have honor, you have some money, you have some time. There are talents that you can sow into your world around you. It says here, he who had received the five talents. If you have talents in you, then you have received already. This person went at once and traded with them, which means he began to use his talents in the world. It says, and he made five talents more. So there is increase that took place. The next verse. So also, he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and, hug his, and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. So we see right here in the scripture, God is saying that the accounts are going to be settled. You see that the person who had five talents and began to sow them into the world accrued an additional five talents. It's a 100% increase. Now he has 10 talents. The person who had the two talents sowed the two talents into the world and got a hundred percent increase now he has four talents so what happened here to the person who did not sow the talents and he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying master you delivered to me five talents here I have made five talents more now look at the attitude that the universe or the divine or God has towards the person who lives by the seed and sows the talents his master said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. 
Now, you could look at this in many ways. You could say that the master is your subconscious mind. You could say it's God. Whatever you want, there is power in this scripture because it is applicable to everyone. Next verse. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, isn't that what you're looking for, to be set over much? Well, then you have to become faithful over little. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here. You have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be more given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, in that place where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, if you like progress, and it feels like your progress is being stifled, decide to dig within yourself of your talents and become interested in sowing your seeds all throughout your world and become a master problem solver because everywhere you see problems, you will see money flowing. More will be given. It is the law that sustains you. Begin solving problems around you for others. You are showing up in the world as a person who has talents and is interested in using them by doing this. The magic attitude is to become interested in solving other people's problems around you. Pour out your talents and you'll discover that what comes through you also begins to stick to you and begins to flow towards you increasingly. What pours out through you also begins to flow towards you increasingly. Ask for more to be able to serve more people and you will no longer be asking amiss. Then get busy acting on this new attitude, the magic attitude of becoming interested in your world around you as a master problem solver. Watch your world transform as you begin painting it with your talents. With love and gratitude, Matthew David Hurtado. If you want a free copy of my number one best-selling book, Allow, Mastering the Law of Least Effort to Receive Your Desires, go to allow.ws and check it out. Thank you, God bless, and take care.